With the recent advances in nanotechnology and engineered nanoparticles research, techniques for assessing properties of novel nanoparticles are also in great demand. Besides the desired properties of nanoparticles, which make them interesting, we also have to determine their hazardous potential to humans, animals and biological systems in general. Recent studies suggest that nanoparticles can strongly interact and disrupt cell membranes. Given the large number of diverse nanomaterials, systematic approaches to nanoparticle toxicity potential assessment are favored. Beside in vivo assays, a popular approach to exploring cell membrane permeability is to use artificial instead of biological systems. It appears that lipid vesicles, which are simplified biological membranes, offer controllable conditions to study effects of xenobiotics and can easily be observed with a light microscope. In such experiments, lipid vesicles are exposed to the various substances and observed with the microscope. Most published results focus on single vesicles and their morphological changes, whether they are observed by a biologist spending hours behind a microscope or a computer algorithm analyzing the video. However, when observed singly, only a limited number of vesicles can be investigated and there is no guarantee that the changes we might be interested in will manifest in that precise sample. Extending the light microscopy approach by providing data on large quantities of vesicles, more information on conformational behavior can be extracted. The methodology presented and applied in our study offers this possibility, where instead of observing single vesicles, a video of vesicle population is recorded and the shapes and sizes of vesicles are analyzed. The experiment is formed so that lipid vesicle solution is divided into multiple samples where some are exposed to investigated nanoparticles and others are left unexposed. During the incubation, we record microscopy videos of all populations after various durations of exposure – 10, 30, 90 minutes, for example. This way, we are later able to compare the changes manifested in the morphology of vesicles and assess whether the nanoparticles induced any significant changes in the exposed population when compared to the unexposed ones. Silicon gel is applied to all sides of the lipid vesicle solution to prevent evaporation. Also, nanoparticles are added from one side of the solution only, allowing us to capture a concentration gradient. We have experimentally confirmed that after up to 5 minutes, a majority of the vesicles are in the same plane. This allows us to record the vesicles with only minor adjustments to the focal plane. To analyze the vesicles, we decided to transform the videos into mosaics, also known as panoramas. This way, by observing a mosaic, a toxicologist can grasp a holistic view of the vesicle population and at the same time the vesicles can be automatically segmented using image processing methods. While creating mosaics from videos, multiple problems arise. At 25 frames per second, a video could contain hundreds of frames with a considerable overlap, consequently containing multiple representations of the same vesicle in subsequent frames. Due to focusing, some of the frames with vesicles are blurred and only minorities sharp and preferable, making it necessary to use only the sharpest ones for mosaics. Thus, we propose a measure of focus to compare the frames and eliminate those containing blurred and unusable visualization of vesicles. After testing multiple measures for evaluating focus in microscopy images, we found that the combination of three measures works best for determining sharpness of lipid vesicles. They are based on gray level intensity, gradient, and intensity frequencies of the frames. These features are contrast, the Brenner gradient, and a Fourier transform based feature, absolute frequency amplitude feature, AFAF. The AFAF is the ratio between the high pass that covers the top two thirds of the frequency band and the total absolute frequency amplitude under the frequency curve of the frame columns. We manually labeled 10% of the frames in one video sequence and trained an LDA classifier using these three features. The projection of every frame's feature vector onto the normal vector of the LDA classification plane was used as a measure to compare frames for focus quality. This way, frames containing vesicles that are out of focus can be removed and only the sharper ones are used for mosaic stitching. Image registration was performed by computing normalized cross-correlation on the edge values of the frames. The shifts between subsequent frames were translations only, and at the height of a single frame of 570 pixels, the average total height of the mosaics is 40,000 pixels. When stitching thousands of frames, 
a memory constraint of a PC comes into play. To allow stitching mosaics of arbitrary sizes, the frames are divided into subsets we call buffers. The vesicles in the population are not completely uniformly distributed throughout the video and some areas contain more vesicles than others. To find areas with fewer vesicles and use them for borders between buffers, we calculated the average variance of every horizontal line in the mosaic. The lines with the lowest variance were also the lines with few or no vesicles. Considering the translation between them, frames of every buffer were merged with a median of their intensities. These median images of each buffer were then stitched together, thus forming the mosaic of the video. To extract the information on vesicle sizes, segmentation of the vesicles from the background is necessary. We implemented a foreground detection algorithm that uses the intensity and edge information. Sobel mask is used to find the edges, and morphological closing operation is applied to extract the foreground regions. After hollow interior regions are filled with four connected neighbors, we calculate the bounding boxes encapsulating the detected foreground regions. Since some bounding boxes contain more than one vesicle, further segmentation is required. A typical vesicle can be recognized as a dark region with a bright halo surrounding it. The intensity function of every region with detected vesicles was inverted and smoothed with a combination of bilateral and Gaussian filters. Next, we used the intensity function of the filtered image to calculate the second order statistics. The Hessian defines a natural boundary for the vesicles. The region between the zero crossings is the high power portion of the signal we would like to segment. Thus, the derivative along the x and y directions is approximated with differences. The second derivative test states that the eigenvalues of the Hessian are negative around the local maxima. On the inflection curve, one of the eigenvalues will change the sign, making the product negative. This can be detected by calculating the determinant of the Hessian, which shares the sign with the product of the eigenvalues of the Hessian. Power of the intensity function of each region, where the determinant is positive, combined with average power of the intensity function of each region, gives a good segmentation of the vesicle. The algorithm was tested on a video sequence and 82% of automatically segmented vesicles overlapped with those manually labeled by the biologist. The remaining 18% include dust and other intruding particles. Currently, the regions resulting from our segmentation can be used to count and estimate vesicle sizes only. However, the biologists are also interested in detecting non-spherical shapes, such as tubes and pearl vesicles which occur more frequently when vesicles are exposed to membrane-altering substances. In this respect, part of our future work will focus on extending the algorithm to classify all known shapes together with pointing out new, previously unidentified structures. Through the eyes of biologists, such advances would allow them to carry out more experiments in less time and therefore assess potential hazardous behavior or harmlessness of nanoparticles with greater certainty.